ladies and gentlemen, I'll do. This is Avengers vs. Excellent Man. And really, it is more Avengers vs. Russia. And briefly, Excellent Man. But one thing it does have is a great cover by Mark Stanley Lee. Mr. Magnets putting on his ad helmet as the Avengers and the Excellent Men look on in worry. Magnifico. That is how I would describe it if I was Spanish. This is issue two of this three issue, four issue mini series. And we have a first page that very handily catches you up on the story. The Avengers have gone to arrest Mr. Magnets and put him on trial for his past crimes. Mr. Magnets was ganning through a bad, I have reformed phase. And he was leading the excellent men, so the other excellent men are reluctant to turn him over. And they stand by their new best friend. Meanwhile, the Russian superheroes... The Soviet super soldier boys, they have also coincidentally waited until this moment to arrest Mr. Magnets for hijacking a submarine ages ago. And we have a big freeway fight between these teams. Which sounds a lot more fun than it actually is. I am not faulting the writer or the artist here. I will get into why I think the Avengers vs. Excellent Men part is weak later on. But I think most people would agree that they bought or illegally downloaded this book. Because they wanted to see the Avengers fight the excellent men. And so much of this series is Avengers fighting Russians. It's not bad. I like the plot. I like this added mix of international incident. And all the fights with them are good. It is a good comic, but I feel a bit cheated when the excellent men run away on page five and leave the Avengers to fight the Soviet super soldier boys. And back in the 80s when this came out, the Soviet super soldier boys were actually considered... A lot less of a joke. They were mostly trapped with respect. They were powerful. They were honourable. They were heroes to their people. But occasionally they would be misinformed. Or tricked into doing something that made them bad guys. It wasn't until... Kurt Busey and Tom Bevort and Michael Bryan Benson and trash like that, that these characters became total jokes. One of them would die every appearance and then a new one of them would show up next appearance and die and be replaced again and again. Here they are at least equal to the Avengers, like Darkstar, who I call the real name for some reason. I don't even know why in one of my first videos I called her a real name. She pretty much beats two Avengers at once here. Good on her. 
But the excellent men, I have two similar points. Maybe they are even the same point, And I just have phrased it differently in me head. But this team of excellent men is bad. It is nobody's idea of the excellent men. They are two and are off characters on the team that people think of. And my other point is that this isn't the team. These aren't really the characters. People want to see fight the Avengers. You've got Wolfman. Yeah, he counts. Rouge too. People want to see her fight the Avengers again. And that's about it. The author character is Storms. Because Storms is here, but this is when she was depowered and still perfect. Where is Steel Man? Him fighting she Hulk should be the most obvious thing. Where is the Smurf? Fetish Fuel was on the team at this point and... She is really clearly the only one who you can have fight Dr. Droom in a battle of Psy powers. Not only that, but I didn't feel like any of these excellent men featured, except for Rouge, are really a match for these Avengers. We will come to that in a few pages. Mr. Magnets, he dances to his odd island base. And he sees his odd costume. And he takes the helmet. He puts on the helmet, like on the cover. And now the Avengers show up to arrest them. Avengers versus Mr. Magnets. That is a good fight. That is one I think stands up as a worthwhile use of our time. It is the excellent men's major enemy, their arch enemy against a different team. I am into this. I would be fine if the issue was just them fighting Mr. Magnets. But this stuff quickly makes way for the rest of the muties to show up and fight. And let me list the problem straight off the bat. We have six excellent men here. One is Storms, who has no powers. So really, we have five excellent men. Two of these characters... Taylor Smith and Pillock, their muty powers are quickly rendered ineffective by Captain Marbles, the real one, Monica Rambeau. She would be able to redirect them with her own powers. So, you have three excellent men, Wolfman, Rouge... And Mr. Magnets. And the matchups didn't really work. Wolfman versus Darth Knight is an interesting two to put up against each other. But it gets a bit lame when they didn't gun anywhere with it. Besides saying that Wolfman's claws can it cut Darth Knight's sword. Rouge versus she Oaks. That is the one fight in this I would say is a fun, worthwhile vignette. This is something that people could get into. Up here, look. Storms is sitting in the jet watching. She's not daying out. I kind of like that though. Roy Sternman is Andalan, the depowered character, right? 
if Christopher Clairvoyant was writing this, she would have already defeated Captain America in hand-to-hand -hand combat and probably have picked up Thor's magic armour and hit him in the head with it. But let me ask this question. Since Rouge is fighting she -Ox, who is fighting for? Are you really saying that off-panel Taylor Smith is giving Thor a run for his money. The excellent men leave, but Dr. Droom has secretly snuck aboard their ship. He claims to be doing so as it is his duty as an Avenger. But to anyone who has read all of this guy's appearances, I suspect one of two things. First is that during all the fighting, he snuck onto the ship to rape storms. Or second is that he didn't give a fuck about the fight and he just hid away on their ship because he was bored and so disinterested in what was going on. I have actually threw some criticism at this or pointed out some of what I perceive as narrative dead ends, but it is a good comic. It is well written. It is tremendously drawn. It is a decent plot. I feel it is light on the promise of Avengers versus Excellent Men. Even when we get some of that, it's very brief. And characters like Captain America and Thor should never be forgotten about and supposedly fighting someone off panel. I think this plot and the writing and the artwork is enough to a bit those small nitpicks, so it's seven thumbs up for this one.